Well, it's a topic that a lot of parents are worried about. We're talking about kids and vaping. Our local school resource officers say it's their main focus these days and parents can help, but they need to be able to spot the signs. Now, Melissa Markegaard is the Tobacco Prevention Coordinator at Fargo Cass Public Health, and she joins us now to show us what we need to be looking out for. Good morning. How are you today? Good morning, Jordan. I am good. How are you? I am doing very well. And we were just talking in the break even with everyone here in the studio about how this issue, it seems, has exploded in the past few years into something that parents need to watch out for. And I was even saying, I mean, 10 years ago, it was like, what is a vape? Well, how does this thing work? What do you mean kids are doing it? And uh, so now what do you have to say to parents when, when they come in and they just have questions about how they should handle this? Right. So, um, you know, I think a lot of parents, they don't even know what they're looking for. And this, the, the vaping industry has really tried to stay couple steps ahead of education as far as as quick as we can get it done. Um, and so the, these devices look different all the time. And I think that's why I'm so glad that you guys continue to have us on um, on a pretty regular basis, because then we can show you what we're what we're specifically looking for, because it does change and it's been changing and evolving um, as different policies like the federal um, tobacco flavor ban comes into play. So then you're not seeing a whole lot of jewel anymore. Well, we had just kind of taught parents to be on the lookout for jewels and now kids really aren't using jewels anymore. What they're really using and what we've seen a huge shift to is disposables. And so that's really what we're, what we're trying to educate parents on is you're looking for a device that does not look like a cigarette. It does not look like a vape. Um, what we've been showing you in the past, it looks totally different. Um, and then the flavors that these kids are using is, is very concerning as well. So do you want me to show you right now or? Yeah, no, let's go over okay. that right now. Let's see what sure. should parents need to be looking out for, you know, in their students' book bags or in their rooms, you know, what should they watch for? Yes, so absolutely. So this one um, is called Mr. Fog and it is a two flavored device. And so um, this particular one is actually mint and, and uh, fruity pebbles. So we, we really we like to point out that those, those flavors are very kid focused. Um, yes, adults like flavors as well, but kids, um, kids are drawn to the fruity pebble type um, flavors, which it seems kind of ridiculous to have to even talk about that, but that's what they're looking for. So this is actually about the size of like one of those chunky highlighters. Okay. And you would just take a hit off the top of it. They're called disposables because there is no charger with these devices. You, 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 you pop this top part off and you can take a hit immediately. Um, the, the scary thing about these products is that a lot of them don't have a whole lot of writing on them. And so you don't know that this one has 2,200 puffs in it. Um, it says that on the box, but it does not say that on the device typically. Um, so, so this is kind of what you're looking for. You might also be looking for something like this. This is called the Hide. Um, I believe this one was a grape type flavor. I can't remember. And I did throw the box away for this one. So I don't know how many puffs are in this one, uh, but it, but it's more than likely um, in the hundreds, if not thousands of puffs um, for this device as well. Again, this is about the size of a chunky highlighter. It blends right in with school supplies in a backpack. Um, parents should be looking for these devices, um, maybe in pockets of clothing that's hanging in a closet, um, in your children's box spring or underneath their mattress. Um, those types of places are very common places for kids to hide their, their vaping devices. And then devices like this. So this is uh, called a loon and it is the, the flavor is, is, um, bad bowl it's called. Okay. So we are seeing also, I had mentioned fruity pebbles and mint. We're also seeing uh, flavors that are very energy drink specific. So we have bad bowl. Um, we have bang type energy drink looking, um, devices that 
that are using that type of flavor. So this, the loon um, is, is very, very thin. And so we hear about kids using these um, in schools as well. And, and they're so easy to hide. So they're in a pocket or there might be in a wallet. I mean, or in a purse, um, in the bottom of a shoe, they're extremely easy to hide. And so we want parents to be on the lookout for devices like this as well. And with this, I mean, it, these kids are also then getting hits of nicotine. I mean, many of them have nicotine. And uh, from what I understand, some vape pens can even have other uh, drugs or like marijuana um, type. Uh, I don't know the wording of it, but uh, right. put in it as well. I mean, so it could actually be like a, a serious thing that these kids are consuming. Oh, for sure, Jordan. This is a this is a very serious thing. No matter what um, is in the device, so typically it is going to be nicotine in these particular devices that I just showed, um, and it is a salt based nicotine. And a salt based nicotine is much more easily absorbed into your system. That makes these products incredibly addictive. Um, and what we're going to find is that these kids use them a few times and they're addicted. And when my, when I talk to students about it and I ask them, do you feel like you're addicted to these products? They say, yes, absolutely. I can't make it through a half an hour without starting to feel some type of withdrawal symptoms. I, I definitely am addicted. And I think the other concern with that is the fact that nicotine um, it changes the adolescent brain. So adolescents, their brains are still developing until age 26 around that area. So if your brain is still developing and your nicotine and the nicotine that you are using is changing how your brain is developing, we're actually going to see those kids have that addiction into adulthood. And we're going to have, you know, when you talk to adults who smoke cigarettes, they say, I started as a teenager. I wish I never would have because it's so I'm addicted. And that's what we're going to see with, with these vape products too, is what we're already seeing with these vape products. All right. Yeah. A lot for parents to watch out for. And we could uh, talk for um, days, hours on end about this, but uh, we do have to go. So Melissa, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Have a great day. Yes. Thank you. Coming up on today's show, a new restaurant in downtown Fargo. We're checking in with Rose Wild. Stick around, that's right after this break.